So welcome to Data Engineer YouTube channel. In this video, we will know what is Power Query in Azure Data Factory. So let's get started with it. All right. So let me just open my Data Factory. Uh, let me just launch this studio. Uh, mainly, we in the earlier videos we have learned about Azure Data Flows, right? So Power Query is similar, but you can uh, you know perform more operations in Power Query. The main purpose of Power Query is to transform the data. You can perform, you know, uh, whatever you can do in SQL, you can do it in Power Query too. So let's see how it actually works. Let's do a hands-on. So what I will do is, I will go to Power Query. So just see, there is no Power Query created. I will just click on New Power Query. It will create a new Power Query. I need to select a data set. So what I will do is basically, I will select Student Data Set. So now, uh, just see, it is giving me an error. Data set without schema is not allowed at in Power Query. So it is very essential without any schema in your data set. If your you know, schema in the data set is empty, you can't use Power Query. So let us import schema first. So what I will do is I will go to data sets. I will click on student DS, means student's data set. Now, what I will do is I will specify the schema. So I will go to schema. I will click on import schema from connection or store. That means it will directly line from the block storage wherever Excel is stored. From there, it will fetch the schema and it will provide us. Now, there are two ways to import the schema. One is to import schema via connection stream. Another is you can even upload a file of schema. It's up to you based on your requirements. Now, I will go to Power Query and this error is resolved. Now, what I can do is just see in my Power Query, I have the data set, right? Now, what I need to do is I need to, you know, query my data. So, how I can do that? Let's check it out. So, basically, I have uh, clicked on Power Query. I selected my data source. I just uh, add it again because it is uh, showing no data, uh, you know, source data set. So, what I will do is again I will add one so that it can, you know, come. So sometimes it may give you error. So just see, uh, now I will see something like this. So once I have added uh, this to that, it is saying currently not all Power Query functions are supported for data wrangling despite being available during authoring. So sometimes these errors occurs, but yeah, finally our Power Query window is activated. You can see it. So let's see it further. Now, Earlier in the previous videos, we saw how data flows work, right? So we even created a project where we created a data flow and then we used that data flow in the pipeline. In a similar manner, we can use Power Query too. So basically, you will transform some data in your Power Query and then you will use that Power Query in your pipeline, right? So you can use it as an activity so that, you know, I, you can further schedule and you can, you know, uh, reuse it. Without pipeline creation, you can't use it. So, let's see how we can uh, transform the data. So, let's see. There are some columns. So, whatever column we have in that Excel, those are imported here. So, you know, everything is there. Now, I can transform my data. So, how to do that? So, I can go to transform. Uh, let's say I want to, you know, you want to use group by, you want to use first two as a header. Everything is available here. So, here you will see all the tables. So, I have only one table here. So, it's showing me that table. Now, just see, here we have something called steps. And if I go to this, it will show me the step view. So, what I have done is, this is my student data set. And, you know, here is my query. So, what I want is, let's say, uh, you can even add some, you know, parameters. So, let's see uh, it further. So, what I will do is, I will click on here. And I will firstly click on expand, right? So what I want to do is you can, let's say, uh, you have some source. So this is my source containing these all columns. What I want is, I want to, let's say, uh, you know, maybe remove the duplicates. So I can do it from here, remove duplicates. And it will remove the duplicates. And then what I will do is finally, once Power Query is created, we can use it in the um, pipeline. Now, these are the operations which are available in Power Query. You can see all the SQL uh, you know, operation, whatever SQL operation, you see these are present in Power Query too. Even the rank, dense rank, you know, group by, order by, you know, even the 
column characters like length, last character you want, you want some range, all are present. The main advantage of this platform is it is dual based and even for, uh, you know, it's a disadvantage for coders because coders love to write code, right? So that's the only advantage or disadvantage you can feel. Otherwise, once your Power Query is created, what you can do is you can click on this pencil icon, uh, you can go to your pipeline and you know, you can just, uh, let's say I'm creating a new pipeline. So I want to, let's say, use this Power Query to transform my data. So what I can do is I will search for Power Query. I will drag and drop it and I can provide the power query, which power query I want. I only have one power query, which is power query one, so I can provide it. So this is how actually power query works. Alright, so once our power query is created, what we need to do is we can go to sync in the pipeline and we can tell where actually you need to sync the data. So let's say student.pqds means student parquet data set. So I want to sync it somewhere here. So this is how you basically create a Power Query. So Power Query is basically nothing but an ETL tool in Azure Data Factory where you can perform all the SQL type of operations. Once your Power Query is created, you can go to pipeline, you can create a pipeline, you can use a Power Query activity. In the settings, you can uh, provide the Power Query name and in the sync, you can provide the sync where actually you want to dump your data after the transformation. So this is all about Power Query. It's a very, very useful tool. Uh, you know, if we want to, uh, if we don't want to use data breaks and you just want to use a data factory for cost optimization, you can definitely go for Power Query. Uh, this is very, very, uh, you know, uh, like GUI based. That's a advantage also and a disadvantage too, because some people like to code. For them, that's a disadvantage. The people who don't love to code, they can go for Power Query. It's an advantage for them. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any question, you can put it in the comment section. Uh, subscribe my channel if you are new to the uh, channel. Thank you.